All right, guys. Well, I figured I'd jump in here and do a little voiceover, uh, kind of just give you the rundown of everything I did here. So you can see we have this older Jackson customer bought it in, just wanted it cleaned up, wanted a restringing and uh, wanted a setup. So I decided to go the whole extra mile because this thing was in pretty rough shape. The fretboard just looked like there's been years and years of dead skin and everything else on it. And the body was in pretty rough shape. Uh, the finish was, you know, had some surface scratches, some uh, a ton of dust and some deeper scratches that I knew I probably wouldn't be able to get out. So we disassembled the whole guitar and then I decided to go ahead and... Uh, buff out the body first so we taped off all the cavities i stuffed the electronics in the cavity uh just to kind of protect them and get them away from everything i didn't want to go completely pulling them out i didn't think it was necessary so we got it all taped off you can see that little piece of tape up in the corner there is actually a chip there that was really loose I ended up going back and filling that with CA glue just so it can't come off. But I didn't want the buffing pad to grab it and just rip it off completely. Um, so we give it a good wiping down before I ended up bringing the buffer out just to make sure there was no grit or anything else on there that can scratch it up even more. And then for the buffing setup, I'm just using this angled uh, Ryobi drill. Uh, works really good and then we're using these little buffing pads from Ryobi also and then I got them from Harbor Freight too and then we're using Meguiar's ultimate compound it's kind of just like a fine cut compound doesn't do anything crazy um, pretty sure it's in the middle of the scale for you know aggressive or fine uh, but it works really really well honestly I've tried a bunch of different ones and I feel like this one is the best working one so far I've completely wet sanded guitars that I've painted and uh, bought them to a mirror shine with this stuff. So it works really, really well. Uh, the guitar probably could have benefited um, from being wet sanded completely and then buffed out, but it was just a, a, a rabbit hole. I didn't want to go down. Some of the scratches were so deep. I would have had to really, really wet sand it and then you kind of risk burning through it. Uh, so I decided just to go ahead and buff it, but it got a lot, and I mean a lot of the surface scratches out. Um, I do end up wet sanding this one little scratch right here with some 2,000 and 3,000 grit wet dry sandpaper. Um, just because the scratch was kind of bothering me. Um, so I ended up just wet sanding it out and then rebuffing it and uh, it came out really, really good. Um, once I saw how good that spot came out, I, that's what kind of made me almost regret not wet sanding the whole body but honestly i mean it came out way better than it looked when the guitar arrived so that's really all that matters here um you know I, i'm the one that decided to go the extra mile here uh so buff that out got that tape on there to protect that little chip uh, and once we wipe it down, it, it definitely looks better, but you can still see some scratches in there. Those were the, the you know the scratches that I had mentioned that are really deep down by the output jack. You can see some scratches, and uh, yeah, it looks kind of crappy still, but you know they were just so deep. I didn't want to risk um, you know wet sanding through the finish just to get them out, so we just left them. Then I wanted to go ahead and give it a good polishing with some Music Nomad guitar polish. The stuff works really, really good. So I just popped it on a little buffing pad um, or popped out a little buffing pad and uh, just put a couple dots on the guitar and uh, decided to give it a good polishing. And I think that really set it off and give it that real deep look, that deep, nice color bought that green out a little bit more um, i love this color it's just like a dark hunter there is a lot of metal flake in there dark hunter green uh definitely uh, a really cool color So we got that all rubbed around let it dry for a while and then i went ahead and used a uh kind of like a polishing cloth to wipe it off and uh, in my opinion it definitely looks a ton better than it did 
uh, being very careful around that chip. I believe this was after I filled it with the CA glue, so I was a little more uh, I was a little more okay with leaving it untaped. But yeah, you can still see some scratches, but definitely a big difference of what it looked like when it came here. And then it was time to go ahead and tackle the neck. That was probably the one thing I was most excited about. I mean, this fretboard was ravish. There was so much just dead skin and gunk and oils, and I don't even know what else, but the thing probably, it was dry as a bone, probably hasn't been oiled in a long, long time. The frets were really corroded. Uh, so I had a couple different methods I wanted to try and uh, we used some lighter fluid, which is almost like a Napatha. And then I use my fretboard 01 from Dunlop. That's kind of like a rubbing alcohol. I'm sure there's other stuff in it. The lighter fluid didn't really do too good. Uh, it probably loosened the gunk up a little bit, but the fretboard 01 really is what uh, got a lot of that off. You know, once we sprayed this on and wiped it down, the fretboard, uh, just the wood itself felt really, really rough. So as you've seen me do in other videos, I decided to go ahead and do a complete scrape down of the fretboard with a brand new fresh razor blade. Uh, you've seen me do it in other videos. It's a method I love doing. It kind of just resurfaces the fretboard, gets it nice and fresh and how it should look. Um, uh, just be really careful when you do it i mean you can't really as long as you keep the razor blade flat you can't really mess up you're not putting too much pressure on you're letting the razor blade do its work uh just make sure it's a brand new razor blade and uh you always want to start at a fret and end at a fret you don't want to stop or start in the middle because you can kind of get like a little you know cut line in the wood and it just you'll have to go back and scrape it out you can also use this method when it comes to filling in cracks. You put some CA glue in the crack and then do the scraping method, and it will kind of take the, uh, the dust from the wood and fill in the crack also. This is safe to do on the inlays. Uh, a lot of people might think you're scratching up the inlays, but uh, you're kind of just resurfacing them. If it does happen to look scratch, you can always buff them out. But by the time you clean it up and get, you know, your fretboard oil on it and everything else, it really just looks better than it did probably uh, in the beginning. Then I went ahead and took this nylon brush just to clean all the sawdust out from the cracks and, you know, on the edges of the frets and everything. Decided to give it one more wipe down with the fretboard 01. Pretty sure, it's, like I said, it's just rubbing alcohol. It smells just like it. There might be some other uh, chemicals in there uh, that make it not as harsh as the rubbing alcohol. And then it came time to tackle the frets, so I wanted to tape off the fretboard. Uh, putting the two pieces of tape down the sides of the of the neck definitely helps. You know, once you tape off all the frets. You know, when you go to untape it, you kind of can take it off in one big piece or at least a couple pieces rather than taping, you know, taking off one piece of tape at a time. Uh, kind of just, you know, helps protect everything and it makes it easier uh, coming off. It's a painstaking process. Uh, it's one of my least favorite things to do is taping off a fretboard. I really need to invest in the, uh, you know, Stumac tape dispenser with the three or four different size tape rolls because it just it looks like it makes it so much easier especially when you get down to the smaller frets so i wanted to go ahead and recrown the frets they were a little flat on top and uh i figured it would just help the cleaning process so i went ahead and used a red sharpie to mark them out and then we're using the fret guru dagger 2.0 i made a video about this uh, crowning file and I think it works really really good I've used some ones from Stu Mac I've used regular files and I have to say this one uh, has been my favorite so far and I think it's a lot cheaper when I got it I believe this was like $40 it might be a little bit more now um, but I love this file it has two different sides to it it has uh, medium large and large extra large depending on what size frets you have 
but it works really, really good. And uh, yeah, it, it really cleaned up the sides of the frets, kind of, you know, help give it that nice round crown look like it should be. Then after I crowned them, I went ahead and, you know, used some scotch Bright to clean all the rest of the marker off, just overall clean the frets. Then I went to some 2,000 and 3,000 grit sandpaper, and then I went to this little piece of, like, leather sandpaper, I guess, or polishing paper uh, that comes with the Music Nomad uh, fret polishing set. And then it was time to completely polish the frets out using mag aluminum polish. I really love what this stuff does to the frets. There is other stuff, you know, purposely made for guitars, but this stuff works really, really good. I've been using it for years and it just really brings out the shine. Uh, you know, it's working good when it turns black. It's getting all that crap off and polishing really good. So just using a small Dremel. Um, I think I got this one from Harbor Freight. It has a couple different speeds. It's really not that powerful, but for, for this type of stuff, you really don't need it to be. So it does take a little while just take your time and uh, get the sides of the frets and everything else just make sure if you're going to do the sides of the frets your fretboard is taped off especially if you have a binding because the Dremel tool will melt the binding ask me how I know Give it a good wipe down. Definitely a big difference, as you can tell. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and get any more, um, you know, any leftover uh, polish or, you know, anything off. So we went ahead and got the toothbrush. This helps really good for getting all the little, you know, nooks and crannies in the, the fretboard wood itself. Um, and just getting all the dust out from in between the frets and everything else. So I like using a little toothbrush. And then, just like the body, it came time to buff out the finish on the headstock. Uh, the, the headstock wasn't anywhere near as bad as the body was, but uh, I figured, why not? We could definitely probably make it look better. So we used the same everything, uh, except for on this one, I used the black pad instead of the yellow one. It's a little bit finer, but I used the same rubbing compound, and it uh, definitely shined it up and came out really, really good. And then finally, to finish the neck off, I went ahead and used the Fretboard 02. Um, it is just a regular fretboard oil. You can use F1 oil. You can use uh, lemon oil. There's a bunch of different stuff out there. I like this because it's kind of has the dabber on it, kind of like a bingo dabber. Just really easy to apply. And uh, so far, this has been my favorite uh, fretboard oil that I've used in a long time. But I do like the F1 oil. That's probably my second favorite. Um, it's a little bit thicker. So for certain situations, it might be better. Then finally came time to get the guitar back together. And it's getting Ottawa's attention very early this year. This is a scary time. Our modeling shows that this may be an especially severe wildfire season throughout the summer. The Prime Minister says Ottawa is coordinating with provinces, training more community-based firefighters, 